Hi, I'm Ross Whitaker from uh, the computer science at the University of Utah. So I'm not a cell biologist, I'm a computer scientist, and um, I'm going to talk today about um, a project that uh, a couple of us uh, had there, and, uh, and I hope you'll sort of see as I go along uh, the relationship between this and some of the things that people are talking about today. Okay, the next, how do I get to the next slide? Oh, this, this particular view, okay, gotcha. Okay, great. So the, the center is the Center for Integrated Biomedical Computing, and it's, head, it's, a, it's an NIH research resource, and it's headed by Chris Johnson, Rob McLeod, and myself. And uh, it has as its mission to develop algorithms and software for what we call image-based simulations. And so this is a particular niche that I hope is not so small and I think is relevant, which is that we had noticed over the years that a number of our collaborators were coming to us with a certain class of problem and these problems fit into a certain kind of paradigm. And the paradigm went something like this, that they have volume data, typically lots and lots of it, and they somehow want to use that volume data to, uh, to sort of generate or guide simulations. And so the typical pipeline for, 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 for achieving that looks something like this, where you start with some image processing, where you typically have to segment or, or filter somehow that data, and then from there, you typically go into some sort of geometric representation. And then those geometric representations eventually feed some sort of direct biomedical simulation. And then sort of overlaying all of that is a whole set of visualization tasks. And so, so that's sort of how we saw this, this particular set of problems. Um, and so, um, so really then the center has kind of three three sort of aspects to it, and one is algorithms, and, uh, and two is software, and three is applications. And so I'm going to talk today, I'm really going to start by talking about just some examples of applications to give you a feeling for the kind of work that we do and sort of how the software fits into that. And then, um, and then I won't talk too much about algorithms, but you have to imagine that behind all this are a bunch of bioengineering and computer science PhD students who are trying to get degrees and things and so there's a lot of technical work and I won't and, and I won't really dwell too much on that today. So here's an example of a problem. So it's it's a problem that deals with the design of ICDs and it's joint work with uh, some some great folks at uh, Boston Children's Hospital. And so you know so there's a there's a typically if we have certain kinds of uh, arrhythmias, uh, fibrillations, you would, you might put a pacemaker in, right? And so, and so there's some standard ways to do that, but in this particular case, these folks are doing it with children. And with children, the problem becomes more complex because children vary a lot in terms of their sizes and shapes, and many of these kids are suffering from certain kinds of cardiac defects, and so that complicates things further. And furthermore, a lot of the designs, a lot of the, the, the off-the-shelf uh, hardware isn't suited for kids. And so somehow this all has to be adapted to kids. And so this raises the question with a particular kid, how do you go about configuring this thing, um, knowing that the rules don't really directly apply from adults? And so the idea was to use simulation to do that. So the steps in a process like this would go something uh, as follows, um, you know, you would, you would need some tools, you'd start probably with a CT, and you'd need some tools to sort of help partition these, uh, this CT data into, into various uh, tissue types. And then once you have all those various tissues, you'll, uh, you'll build a mesh, some sort of a 3D mesh from those things. In, in our case, we're looking at sort of body fitting tetrahedral meshes. Um, and then you'll do, uh, you know, you'll assign to those, um, to those various pieces, you'll assign material properties, right? In this case, these will be conductive uh, properties. And so that's kind of the setup that leads into this. And so the, the, our goal then is to produce kind of a sort of a set, you could say, of software tools that help address these issues. So we have a, uh, an image processing kind of application called SEG3D, which helps build all these label maps. And then we have a meshing toolkit called Biomesh3D that uh, helps in building these tetrahedral meshes. And then uh, there's a visualization piece that allows you to take the direct data and these segmented label maps and to be able to do uh, sort of realistic or compelling uh, 3D renderings uh, in, you know, in, in interactive kinds of uh, methods. And then you, uh, you are going to take all this, uh, this model and you'll run you know, these, these electrophysiology 
sorts of simulations, and then we'll typically validate that at some stage against uh, what we actually uh, see. And, uh, and then all of this gets, the simulations get run and visualized in a package that was mentioned earlier today called Ski Run. So that's kind of roughly how the typical pipeline goes and how we fit into it. And then, of course, these results get used somehow, um, typically in kind of an interactive way to try to do design. So that's kind of a design problem. So here's a different problem, also cardiac. And this deals, this is more of a discovery sort of problem. So the idea is that, uh, you know, we know that uh, ischemia, that heart attacks are at import, uh, you know, sort of a major, um, you know, major cause of death. And, uh, and there are different ways we get data about people who may be suffering or have suffered from uh, heart attacks. Or, uh, and so the goal is to help cardiologists identify and localize ischemias and arrhythmias in patients from your typical ECG. Okay, and this is not a very um, this is not a very fine. How should I say it? It's an error-prone process, and yet very important. So, so the idea then is to do is to somehow help inform this process by what we'll call sort of generative models, and that is to say we start with sort of these component-wise heart models and we can simulate uh, various kinds of ischemia. And, uh, and then we have from the similar pipeline you saw earlier of segmentations and, uh, and mesh building uh, tools, we can build up these uh, models of the heart. And then we can do um, solve reaction diffusion equations on those heart models, certain kinds of propagation equations, and, uh, and then look at how various ischemias would affect the uh, the status of the electric fields on the chest. And so that's another typical sort of paradigm that we work in. So let me just talk about one more. I have a few minutes left. Um, this is work um, that we do with our bioengineering department, Jeff Weiss and Annie Anderson. They do biomechanics. And so they have already a pipeline, uh, they call it FE Bio, to be able to do these kind of solid mechanical simulations. Um, and so they have a meshing sort of strategy and uh, do the simulations. And then they validate these simulations, typically in cadavers, to, to be able to, to, to say whether or not they're uh, properly estimating pressures on the cartilage in the femur. So the idea is to study these pressures and to be able to relate uh, morphology to certain kinds of uh, cartilage damage, degenerative cartilage damage. And so what we did with them is we're trying to take this one step further because when we study uh, a particular individual, we get information about that individual. But in fact, there are whole classes of patients that are at risk for certain kinds of hip damage and will eventually need hip replacements. And so we built um, a set of tools to work with them and a couple of other collaborators on how to characterize the shapes of populations, how to automatically build these kinds of shape models and to be able to do statistics on these models and compare groups of people, normal controls, let's say, versus people who have certain kinds of cam impingements in this case. And the tools that we, uh, that we use for that is a toolkit called ShapeWorks. And we get outputs like this that allow us to look at st statistically meaningful differences between groups on various modes of, of, the, of the data set. And so this similar technology has been applied to mouse uh, knockout models, in this case with Kevin Jones, who's, a, who's an, uh, an oncologist. Um, and, uh, and, you know, be, being able to use these to characterize different kinds of uh, mutations and, uh, and compare these mutations to, to cancer model mutations to, uh, to various kinds of to, to, to normal controls. And so this is sort of the, sort of the strategy for this. So, so let me just wrap up by saying the, the idea, kind of the philosophy behind all this work is that there's sort of a collection of tools that fit into these various pieces of image processing, building geometries, modeling uh, and simulation, and ultimately visualization that uh, work that sort of each stands on its own, but that interoperate in a way that uh, allows people to, to, uh, to use these to, to address certain kinds of clinical problems. So.